For Karima Media's Polity, I'm Sash Whitley. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sutner joins me for Sutner's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Hi, Professor. Hi, hi. You have been very vocal on social media in attacking the armed robbery at the Helen Sussman Foundation. Why do you think this is so important? Yeah, it's, um, I think the people, <laughs> people at the Helen Sussman Foundation have been a bit surprised, you know, because they thanked me and all of that. And why I think it's important is that this is not your usual target. Abakhlali, uh, Basin, John Dolo in Durban are used to being uh, attacked, having their shacks demolished, people killed, all of this. But they don't go into Parktown and uh, go to uh, the entrance and uh, find their way up to the offices, have their own keys. I uh, have a woman with a phone and she tells them exactly what to do and then she hears something else on the phone. And um, what it seems to me is happening is that even if those who investigate it happen to be the Hawks, uh, the idea that the robbers want to leave in the mind of the Helen Sussman Foundation is that no one is safe from the forces of this government and probably is the Hawks or someone connected with them but uh, it the main thing with that sort of attack you know the Helen Sussman Foundation has been bringing an action which would declare General Ntlemeza the head of the Hawks to be unfit to hold office because a judge declared about six months ago, four months ago, that he's a liar and all these sorts of things. Now, this sort of brazen type of attack, which, I mean, what robber who wants your goods is going to be getting instructions on a cell phone from somewhere else? Because they want to take the stuff and go. Secondly, what is interesting is that they took old computers. Now, Marianne Tam writes an article yesterday in the Daily Maverick where she examines this and what she comes up with is that in this present world when you can actually intercept material over the internet, it's really only the typewriter that is a safe medium for uh, writing your ideas and then hiding them somewhere or other because the type of writer is not connected to the internet and probably they wanted to make 100% sure that they had all the information they wanted by getting old computers not just the ones that they have already penetrated. So it seems to me that this has been uh, very very scary in some ways in the sense that uh, while the main brunt of attack remains born to be borne by the poorest of the poor, they're now going into elite organizations. So everyone is supposed to be scared by this. How wide is this abuse? Well, you know, um, just yesterday or the day before, um, uh, Bazooka Khadebe who is involved in resisting uh, titanium mining on the wild coast was assassinated. So just one or two days ago this has happened and this is one of these areas where the mining has been resisted not just by the community but also by the traditional leaders and the police have not come to their assistance. And they are very angry about this but they're going to continue to resist it. So you have that just as this Helen Sussman thing is being written about, you have another assassination of a relatively vulnerable person in an area like this. And this is happening all, all the time in a number of different parts of the country. And what can we do about this? You see, what I, because I've got a political background, I always ask myself, when you suffer a particular 
blow or people experience some adversity, how can you turn that adversity into an opportunity to make gains? Now, insofar as we now have a situation where the violence, the lawlessness is being experienced not just by the poorest of the poor, but also by some of the wealthier type organizations. It seems to me to point to a commonality between these people, that they may not share certain goals. They may have very different views about how they want South Africa to turn out, but they have a common interest in the rule of law, in constitutionalism. And it seems to me to indicate the necessity of dialogue between people who share uh, a desire to be a South Africa that conforms to its own laws, to constitutionalism. I've said before, the laws of South Africa after 1994 are laws that protect human rights and dignity and defend the citizens. So it's not the same as apartheid laws. So defending legalities, legality is very, very important. So I would like to see the development of cooperation around these issues, some sort of alliance against lawlessness. Uh, I believe ultimately in some sort of united front. And, and I have criticized the way the NUMSA initiated united front is prioritizing left-wing things like socialism when I think you've got to ask yourself, what are people experiencing? Now, what we are experiencing here goes beyond those who believe in socialism, not just the people in the Susan Foundation, but even maybe these titanium miners and Abakhali, some of them are just interested in their um, having a roof over their heads and things like that. They're not thought about socialism. I mean, there's one meeting I heard about where some of these left-wing people came to a rural community and they were talking about class struggle, class struggle. And one of the old people said, look, you're talking about class. Me, I'm interested in class rooms. And I think we've got to understand that the first point at which you meet people uh, and at which they meet oppression is not covered by a theoretical concept like socialism, it's covered by what they experience. And I think we must build on that commonality. Thank you, Professor. That was Professor Raymond Sattner speaking to Krumer Media's policy about the attack on the Helen Sussman Foundation and defending legality.